Hi, I'm Peter Birch, and today let's talk about being successful at breeding reptiles. That's right, having some success when we're breeding reptiles. To everyone who's new to my channel, thank you so much for finding me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification button to continue to join the adventure. For everyone else, let's find out what it takes to be successful at breeding reptiles. Welcome to Criticam. So the big question for today is, what does it take to be successful at breeding reptiles? Now, um, does it, well, there's so many different things, you know, we've talked about it previously, we talked about good quality stock, so starting off with good quality animals to become good quality breeders, we've talked about good quality enclosures, which also comes down to heating elements, thermostats, and all the other bits and pieces, and we've also got to be very mindful when we think about good quality products, we've got to think about the food. So the food for animals has to be of high importance, obviously, because high quality food can only make your animals be better productive animals. Now, um, this is sort of the sites that you want to see when you know you're on the right track. That's right, when we're heading on the right track, we can have a look around and see things like this. That beautiful girl right there. Look at that. To me, she looks like she's heading in the right direction, that's right. So that's an albino olive python, and olive pythons are one of those trick animals. They can be quite difficult at times to breed. I think it comes down to a few different factors, not just cycling, not just temperatures, not just feeding regimes, but we're also talking about compatibility. Now, certain things in nature have to work for their ability to be able to breed with other animals. So therefore, there's a compatibility. If the animals aren't compatible, then sometimes the females will reject the males or even the males won't even make any advances towards the females. So sometimes you might need to rotate animals before you find that lucky dip or the right sort of connections for those animals to go into. Now, that goes through all different sorts of animals. Now, um, you know, we do breed a couple of different types of pythons here and um, we do work with a few lizards. Here's a couple of these little guys here. Woo! Nearly jumped out of my hand there. Little barking geckos, or the Underwoodosaurus milli eyes. So we're going to be working with those guys. We're very lucky to have actually got a few breeding colony here that we've got going now. And we also work with the knobtail geckos. The trite knobtail geckos. So, you know, we do work with a variety of different things, and we do have success with different things as well. Now, you've seen that we've um, Recently been breeding a few different things such as the blue tongue lizards are often mating and doing their things We've done a few other landscaping and changes here with the small monitors That's starting to show good results already. It looks like we've got a couple of females there that might be gravid But um, you know with the python stuff It's pretty straightforward and that's what it comes down to is Choosing the right types of animals obviously when you're choosing the right types of animals when we're talking pythons we're talking in particular picking the right sort of um, combinations that we want to achieve to get the best results. Now, when we're talking about morph stuff, we're obviously talking about trying to create the new combination stuff and then going down those lines and perfecting what's already available. Well, that's what I think anyway. So, when you want to have great results with reptiles and breeding reptiles, my recommendations are number one, good quality stock. Number two, good quality enclosures, temperatures, thermostats, all that sort of stuff. Number three, good quality food, so good quality diets. So you've got to really be cautious about those diets. Now when we're talking with lizards, in fact, we need good quality UV, so ultraviolet light. Now you've got to really do some research there for the different types of species. Now blue tongue lizards can be housed and maintained in plastic tub systems like this, or they can be maintained in indoor pits, which you've seen us do before. And, you know, those types of things, just like these guys here, indoor pits, you can see down there. Uh, some other lizards we keep in these bigger enclosures here with different sort of lighting and heating systems. So you need to do a lot of homework. So basically, you're going to have to do a lot of homework to work out what types of requirements those animals have before you can even jump in and think I'm just gonna buy a pair of animals and then breed them and then I'm gonna make lots of money it doesn't work like that guys now a lot of people come to me and say what's the greatest advice for an investment animal well it's a very simple guys 
the best advice for investment animals is work with something you love. Because if it never pays out, or you never make a dollar out of it, at least you've got some cool looking animals that you're gonna love forever. And I'm guilty of that. You know, I do love a lot of these different lizards and different snakes and things that I work with. And if I don't sell them, it's no great thing. I, I'll keep them forever, I don't care. Like, I, I do it because I love the animals. And, and particularly, you know, you should actually go out on a branch, try and work with something different, try and crack that combination. Because every animal has a combination. Now, like we're talking about breeding successes, so they could be different things with different diets will actually help them breed more prolific. It can be uh, humidity, it can be temperature hues, it can be part of the cycling, and it could be different, you know, ratios, male to female, sex ratios that can tick them off. It can be so many different things. And for me as a reptile breeder, I find that exciting and that's what keeps me going and I love working with them. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's show, guys. Make sure you give me a like. Hit me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 